Good day. This is Jim Deadman. Welcome to my shop here at Saw Logs Plastic Cups. Uh, today we're working on a project that's been kicking around in my head for a while and this will probably be part one of it. Uh, I've been uh, wanting to do something for a while. I've been looking for a tool. Um, as you know on my videos I use a lot of CNMG type inserts to do a lot of turning. Well, I wanted a chamfering tool that I could use the off corners of it. And then I've got some of the facing tools that uses off corners and such as that. So I've been doing some looking and so I couldn't find anything commercially available that I wanted. So I come up with a design that is basically going to take some, a little, you know, to save me some trouble basically. I took a cheap imported tool holder and used it as the base and machined me a basically a carrier to put it in and cut it at certain angles and stuff. So it's it was it sounds more complicated than it is. It's just basically a lot of trial and error and, and looking into. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kick it off by going to the, getting started on this. Uh, there's a lot of little sh operations, mostly because of the material I chose and such as that. So, set back, uh, pull you up your, your chair, your easy chair, get you a cold drink or a cup of coffee, depending on what time you're watching this. And uh, just sort of peek over my shoulder. Let's have a little fun getting this tool made. Good day. Uh, I'm gonna show you a quick thing. This, is, this will be the finished tool when the, this video series is complete. So I want you to look at it. See, it's a it's a chamfering tool that I basically welded onto a block that I machined. So uh, you're gonna come along and uh, no matter which two of the parts, this is what the finished product will look like. So I hope you enjoy it. This is the start of a new project. Uh, and I'm going to make, so I'm going to do a little, I'm, going to, I'm using a piece of round stock because I've got it. So, all I'm going to do here is I just want to clean both sides up. They look like they may have been faced off or something, but just to be safe, I'm going to, I'm going to take a light face cut on both sides of this. I'm not going to turn the OD. You'll see in a little while what I'm going to do with this. So. I'm actually going to make. A, I got a project that I'm starting on today, and we're going to be making a tool, a, a new chamfering tool, and I'm going to make it out of a. I want to use the off corners of CNMG inserts. And every one of them that's out there in the marketplace today, most all of them are, made, are not made like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm digging around in the metal pile, and I found this piece. Of, I've got several different options, but I had this piece of round stock that's just about the right thickness and the right width if I cut the corners out. So I'm facing each end of this thing off, and then we're going to lay it out, and we're going to saw it to create a uh, blank. So what I'm doing right now is facing the front side off, and I'll go back to the other side here in a minute and face it off, and then we'll draw it, lay it, figure out, lay it out, what we want rough, rough dimensions put it in the saw fixture and cut it. So that's what we're going to do today. There we go. One side done. Okay, today we're sawing. Now we're sawing this up. And you might ask me why not just use a square piece to stop. Well, you kind of got to have what you got to have. Now we're going to have to mill this and true it anyway. But now I at least have two true corners for doing it this way. 
and also too I have this piece of round stock it's probably more 10 18 so we're going to saw it on each side using the saw fixture like that and then we'll we'll put it in the mill and square it up and that's what we'll work with to build the base of this we're actually going to make this put a dovetail in this what, what will happen when it's done and then we're going to fix it to put the tool in so there's a lot of machining going into this before we even get to the next part. So we got a we got a lot of work to do. I'm not gonna bore you with all the sawing. I just thought I'd let you see a little bit, and you'd see my saw fixture while we're talking about it. Hey guys, I'm squaring up the stock. This is the last one here. I'm rough squared it here with the uh, saw. I'm going to be milling everything square. <coughs> I have two surfaces to reference to, and that'll be what I'll work from. And those are the ones you've seen me facing late. Uh, saw fixture sure does come in handy. Okay, we're starting to square the block up. Basically, got my mill, milling cutter in. We're just taking nice light cuts. My mill is back here is a little noisy, and it always has been. And all I'm doing is just enough to clean this up. So once I get all the saw off of this, then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. that's what we're doing All right, now everybody has different ways of doing things now what I'm going to do here the plan is is I'm gonna make a solid block which this is going to mount to the quick change post then we're going to cut a, a angle into it and we're literally going to weld a tool holder on this so I've got to make a dovetail so the, so the way I do this, and this again, it's, you know, everybody has its own method, is I figure out, you know, I've done, kind of done my checking on the lathe and laying this out. So this is where I want my dovetail to center up from. So each, so that this will hang out far enough for everything to work. So theoretically, this is going to be the center of the dovetail. I just made a line and lined everything up by eye. Well, this is, now even with a tool holder or something, or even making a block, you wanted to get exactly the block you could, you could, you know, find center. But the bottom line, this is where my center is going to be. This is zero. So that's the first step. Okay, the second step, oops, excuse me for kicking it, is I, I'm going to hit a Y zero. For everything that I'm going to do, as far as the width of the slot plus the depth of the slots, everything here is going to be done off of this Y0. In other words, I'll shift either side of this. It's basically a three-quarter cutter. So by doing it this way, I know how much I'm moving anything I want to do. Now this will work with the block flipped around the other way and using the Y to cut the length of the block. I'm just using the X because I can use the power feed to work with this, and I can because I'm making basically a block. What I'm basically doing is making a block that I can cut a piece off of and weld. So instead of reinventing the wheel, <coughs> and I'm making it to where I can line all this stuff up too. It'll make a little more sense once we get into this a little further. I'm going to fix the setup on my... Uh, uh, dovetail for this tool I'm building. Um, this tool has been a project that I'm working on. Uh, basically, you know, uh, it's something I just wanted to build. It's probably sort of silly. And the way I set up for my dovetails is that's a little tight.
is I take my uh, take me uh, basically a, a feeler gauge about ten thousandths and I adjust it till I don't know if any of you guys are old enough to remember putting points in a car but you want to adjust that like a set of points right there. Now I'm set up and I got a ten thousandths gap so now I've got to get set up to measure my dovetail out and what it's got to be so then we'll work it. I'm not going to bore you to cut the dovetail I'm just going to show you I'm starting on it and I'll bring you back when I get the dovetail done. You've seen me cut a lot of dovetails and I don't think I need to bore you with another dovetail lesson. So I'm set up and starting on it now. One thing I like to do and what I'm doing is I try to do conventional milling and I try to be consistently patient. So I'm, I'm going to go basically so I'm going about 30,000 pass with the, end, with the end mill uh, dovetail cut. Now it'll probably take more, and I'm a, I'm a bit conservative. So normally when I'm doing this, I'm doing about 30 thousandths of feed, and uh, I'm running around 500 RPM, well within the speed for high speed steel. I don't really, I just kind of do this for feel. And the deeper you get up into the insert, the more you're cutting off. So I try to hold it to about 30 thousandths of pass so I'm not abusing anything. There's a lot of beating that goes on in there and your stuff can move. So going in there taking in big passes really makes it hard on everything. Okay, now there's the block fitted. And what I do is I'll measure them, cut them to size, and I actually have an old piston block I use to slide them on so that I will make sure they fit good. And that's a good fit right there. And it's, you know, uh, I, I've never been able to cut them right to the size of a block. I've always had to cut them a little bit big to get them to fit. Now, I don't understand it. I think it's because I'm probably not putting the same amount of step in the bottom as they do. So, it, it, and it varies. So this one here's got about a 10,000 step, which I think is good. Thank you for watching this first part of my tool build. Uh, I will remind you that this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman's Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your enjoyment on YouTube. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some ideas if you have your own shop. If you're just sitting back for the entertainment value, don't laugh too hard, crazy ass old man. With all that being said, I want to thank the ones of you who subscribe to my channel. There's a red thing under this YouTube video if you're not a subscriber where it says subscribe and it's in the red. Click on it, please. I, I really appreciate if you'd subscribe to my channel. It is growing and we always having fun. That way you'll get emails and notifications when I throw something else up for your entertainment or knowledge. Also, comments are always welcome. I appreciate all the comments. My channel's small enough that I try to personally respond to every comment. So, uh, you know, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to write those comments. If you take the time to write the comment, I'm going to take the time to get back with you. But with all that being said, I hope you did enjoy the video again today. And with no further ado, we're going to close this one out, and we will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.